What's up, y'all? This is your boy, Jenny Jones. Welcome to the Authentic Fit channel. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody who subscribed to the channel. Remember to subscribe, like, dislike, comment. Let me know what's going on. Today, this is the fifth episode of Old Word. As you know, we discuss about a few topics of what's going on in the culture. So we're going to start talking about the baby. You know, so a lot of people have been saying that baby's being blackballed and that he fell off. But he just dropped baby on baby two. So we're going to see what that's about. Also, Mike Tyson and Bobby Brown chopped it up last week to talk about a few things on the podcast. Um, you know Mike and Bobby, but they've been boys since uh, New Edition days. Uh, and they've been winding up ever since. And they've been through a lot of trials and tribulations. And it's a blessing to see them um, here still laugh and grow old. Also, as you know, DJ Academix uh, made a lot of headlines last week about uh, old school rappers being dusty. So it caught a lot of attention, caught a lot of heat. They got a lot of response from the community. So do we put respect enough on our legends? So we're gonna talk about that too. So not gonna talk any further. Let's get to it. On September 23rd, The Babies, the sequel Baby on Baby 2 album was released. The first one, which came out on March 1st, 2019, had hits like Sewage, Going Baby on Baby, and Babysitter with Offset. He has since released multiple successful projects and multiple hits. He gained a lot of notoriety fast, but now since the Rolling Loud incident, the altercations and relationship issues, the Charlotte rapper been having a lot of backlash. With his attitude towards it, it seems like people are not feeling him like before. We all saw how everything played out socially online. Yeah. If there was something you could do differently, would you have done that differently? Maybe not. Nope. Nope. Fuck that. Yeah. Life is life. A lot of people been saying he fell off and he's being blackballed by the music industry. With sources claiming that he's projected to sell 16,000 as of late by controlsound.com, it's now at 17,252 units. Is the baby career really a stake? Baby on Baby 2 addresses the controversy. The album starts with a couple bangers and get right to it on Go Again where he says, This shit here and nothing new. Know how many times a nigga fell down and shook off a loss. Letting us know in the first couple bars, he's not tripping on that. Songs like Still shows that he still stand on that and won't lose his pride with the bullshit. Also, a lot of people have been talking about Boogie Men, the song where he talks about fucking on Megan the Stallion and goes on by saying, but I kept it player, I ain't saying nothing about it, had a pretty boy, boyfriend, tweeting me, ready to die about the bitch like a coward. Petty shit, but entertaining as it made headlines on various platforms. It brought more attention to the project, but aside from that, it's a dope song, and it got a dope video to it. You play with me, oh goddamn, shut the lights off, Boogie Man. Low key, the chorus can be a top five hood Halloween anthem. Further in the album, the baby gets vulnerable on songs like That's Why, where he talks about growing and stop running from pain. As we know, he lost his father around when the Kirk album dropped, which was an homage to him. He also later lost his older brother to suicide. The album is good. It's more laid back and has more melody than the first Baby on Baby. Also, he's being transparent about almost everything that's going on in his life. He spit game and the confidence is here. He could have more features on this one too though. Anthony Hamilton makes an appearance. Respectfully, the song is just okay. The baby could have chose a where I'm from or a Charlene type of approach for the record. 
We know Anthony can sing, but it would have been fire to hear him and the baby get real as fuck with it. And the beats are not as engaging as the first project. Seems like he had more fun doing the first one. You can write to it, but it don't go hard as the first baby on baby. You hear it in the music. The baby knows clearly what's going on. There seems to be a narrative that the media tries to stick with. Seems like whatever that can add to the fire is a step forward for them. There's a dark cloud now, and he addresses it. The way the media the media paints me, it, that draws a certain type of attention from people. I don't think I know for a fact. Like yeah. People see me and think like I'm a super aggressive person. Because you know, you never know. I look at it like a drought. You know what I'm saying? In the streets, like it's the same thing. Like that's guaranteed to happen. You know what I'm saying? It's going to make or break cussless. You know what I mean? Shit's guaranteed to happen. You mean? Yeah, absolutely. And whatever game you play, you know what I mean? Ain't nothing just ups, 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 ups. You feel me? So what if you it like? ain't never been like that for me, so I don't expect it. Yeah. You know, I don't expect it out of this business for sure. First they love you, then they hate you, then they love you again. And we have seen that from other artists too. There's still people supporting the baby. He still talks this shit, give you game, makes you laugh, bounce, is unapologetic about being himself and won't back down to please people. Might be the real reason they mad and they go so hard. The baby will be fine and is still representing. We with you. Let him talk. Gotta have fun with the bullshit too. Remember in Dark Knight, at the end, Gordon says something after Batman says he'll take the L, fuck it? So, the baby might not be the rapper the music industry needs right now, so they will hurt him. He can take it because he's not a hero. He's an entrepreneur, a dope MC, a real one, and he's having fun with the media too. Then which is me, like, contrary to like you know popular belief, like I'm, I'm way more controlled in, in like high pressure situations than people think I am. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Like I say, just the media and the way they paint things, it'll make an ant look like a dinosaur. Yeah, I'm sure. an ant. Look at me like an ant. Yeah, you know what they like, they like, they like that. They <laughs> but the next album gotta be fire though. A couple days ago, original bad boy and king of R&B Bobby Brown sat down on a hot box and podcast to talk and reflect with Mike Tyson about a couple topics from the past and more. This felt more like catching up with an old friend. As you know, Bobby Brown and Mike Tyson were hanging out at the height of their career in their early 20s. Mike first met Bobby Brown at the New Edition concert backstage and it's been on ever since. Mike would wait for Bobby to finish a show. Or Mike would tell Bobby, wait for me, the fight is not going to take long, I'll be right there. In a prime, could you imagine what that was like? Bobby Brown killing in on stage, hunching everything, and then the youngest heavyweight champion in the world taking out his opponents, just looking at them? They were living the life. Unfortunately, both also had similar struggles. The addictions and the loss of their daughters. What made it, what, what, what was a turning point for you that made you realize that you need to stop? After my daughter died. And yeah, I believe that's when it happened. What about you, Bobby? Like a month after that, yeah, a month after that. Um... Yeah, I believe it was around the same time for me also, when my daughter died. But sometimes in the pain, you can find the beauty. While they were both in the same rehab center, they share a funny story where former death row CEO Suge Knight tried to pay Mike a visit. We're both fucked up. <laughs> uh, we end up in the same place. Uh, <coughs> both of us for the same fucking reasons. Just you can't know, stop. Just can't stop doing... <laughs> doing what we do, right. what we did at the time. Um, I remember my wife showing up and um, saying, um, guess who the fuck I just saw at the gate? <laughs> and I was like, who, who did you see at the gate? She was like, Cat Williams and, and Suge Knight. I was like, well, what the fuck they, they doing here? And, and she was telling me, they're here to see Mike. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, Mike, I know you ain't trying to leave this motherfucker, 
not right now. When, when we, we're trying to get ourselves together. When the guy told me Sugar was at the door, I was like, okay, cool. I didn't think, I thought he came to see Bobby. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he came to see Bobby. So I was like, all right, cool, man. And the next thing I know, everybody, they, everybody got scared. You know, the staff, the, the police, everybody they was, was shaking scared. Their shit. And I'm, I'm in there watching television, eating. I'm, I'm so fat, <laughs> eating stuff. <laughs> and um, he said, "Yo, Mike, um, can you please, can you be kind enough to go and tell Shug that you know everybody's scared?" He made, uh, so I had to go down there, and I said, "Actually." They wanted me to go, but I couldn't go because everybody was scared and everything. I said, man, if I go, I'll probably go to prison or something because I probably was on parole and they had to send me there because I was driving drunk or high or something. Did Sugar come to break you out or something? Sugar was throwing shit over the gate. <laughs> <laughs> Even a little story with Aaron Hall. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so they, you, we have a time, a pass where I mean, that we can go to the gym, right? And go to the gym and work out. So I'm in the fucking gym, and Aaron Hall's there, right? The singer? Yeah, he's there with some of I'm trying to lift weights, and him and a whole bunch of bloods are around, and he's talking. I'm like, what the fuck? And then in that situation, too, they said, Mike, um, can you talk to them, ask them to leave, man? Because they knew what gym I was going to, and they came there to talk to me. And like, and everybody, guys, everybody was shook the whole auditorium, the whole gym, they were all shook with this, all the guys that came in with their reds and shit. <laughs> now, they are both married and own various ventures. This is a journey that these survivors share together and can reflect on. Both went through so much being so young in the entertainment business and facing adversities that could have easily took them out. It's funny and a blessing to see those two grow old together. Salute. Last week was a hell of a week for DJ Academics. If you haven't seen it yet, the media personality, which gave a platform on the war in Chirac, Chicago, was talking about old school rappers being dusty with no money talking shit about the new generation. Have you seen any of these old rappers who be like, yo, they're the foundation of hip hop really living good? Them niggas be looking really dusty. I kid you not. And then none of y'all try to cover me because I don't fuck with y'all niggas either. So I'm just tell y'all the truth. Y'all be looking like every time they be like an old, old nigga talking about hip hop, you be like, yo, bro, you sure you invented this? Because everybody else living better than you. That caught a lot of attention as he got a little aggressive when he addressed hip hop icon LL Cool J. LL heard that and spoke on it. It came to my attention that a DJ and, um, I'm not going to say any names because I don't think it's necessary. A DJ basically said that, um, you know, a lot of the pioneers in hip hop are, you know, they're dusty or how can they be the pe person that, um, you know, invented hip hop if, uh, you know, they don't have a lot of money. Um, or if they don't look or represent like they have a lot of dough, right? Let me explain something to you um, and, and, and say this for you guys. Don't confuse someone's ability to develop a business model. Don't conflate. In other words, don't think just because somebody knows how to get money or fails to get money that they didn't make a contribution to the culture. Hopefully, DJ Academics was able to clarify himself on The Breakfast Club to break things down. But it couldn't go away just like that. It seems that it has woke up the community and they hurry to talk about it. Since a couple of years, there have been new media platforms for legends to receive their flowers. Even that term has been popularized. But does the pioneers get the proper respect on their name though? There was a good point that was made by LL. With all the sponsorships, the partnerships, and all the business deals that artists are able to make now, it's hard to imagine that rappers back then would sign for a car and a chain with no back end. Straight robbery. Hip hop was so fresh that it wasn't even considered a business like that. There were no accountants, no lawyers, the main things you should have from jump, but there was no representation in those offices. They couldn't have those opportunities. Hip hop was not welcome like that. Big Daddy Kane shares a story explaining this. 
Mm -hmm. Because you got to keep in mind, during our era, we weren't even accepted a lot of places. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, I remember uh, Prince had me do a rhyme on the Bat Dance song for that Batman movie with Michael Keaton. Wow. You know, and I put a verse to it. Warner Brothers Records is happy. Loving it. Warner Brothers Film said, nah. Wow. Took me off. <laughs> wow. You know? So, I mean, it's like we wasn't accepted a mm -hmm. lot of places. You know, hip-hop, you know. So, you know. Okay, I think you, I think you might have missed something here. Mm -hmm. Warner Brothers Films didn't want me, didn't want a Warner Brothers artist <laughs> on the song with Prince. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Why? I'm on Warner Brothers. What? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I missed that. Why, though? What was their reasoning? Because <laughs> it was rap. That's how bad it was. Now it's a multi-billion dollar business, and unfortunately, most of the rappers from the 80s don't get it like that, except for a few. We have seen rappers die in front of our eyes, suffering without insurance to get hospitalized. It was shocking to see Black Rob in that condition. Our happy. Well, my tongue, my, my, man, I need some, I need some rest, man. Really, man, I need some rest, man. My, 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 my side is killing me. <sighs> Even though they missed the opportunities, they should have a pension where they know they are going to be taken care of. At least. It brings another point that Uncle L made. Because they are not rich don't mean they have no value. Broke or wealthy, they have contributed to the culture. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is 90% of the time, it's not really, we're not really speaking solely on the quality of the music. Perception is based on how hot you are or how much money you got. If 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 fans stood up and if people was like, and I know a lot of people do, but if the general consensus was, you know, we want you to have great music, I promise you niggas would chill a little bit. But it's not about that. We want to know how much money you got. We got boss up, we got media takeout, we got baller alert, we got all these things. That's getting more retweets and, and more tweets and more followers than Def Jam Records. I don't give a fuck about your music, what you driving, how much money you got, who's your girlfriend, you, 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 your Jordans are fake, this is weak, the Yeezys never came out in that color. Oh, all right, I'm going to focus on this. Oh, nigga, your music is trash. Get the fuck out of here. Nigga, when, come on, cuz. As far as the art, they laid the foundation. Nobody was rapping like Rakim before. You look at Big Daddy Kane, Slick Rick with the jewelry, look. He even had a nose ring before Pac. The look, the approach come from them. Don't get it wrong. It's dope to see new guys elevate the game to another level. They contribute to the culture as well. But we gotta put more respect on our legends for real. We can't call them dusty, man. Those guys took the hits so we could live longer. Right now, there's a 10-year-old kid that's a huge fan of KISS, Iron Maiden, and Aerosmith with all the albums, posters. Why do we have to separate generations in our culture? We gotta be held accountable to and represent like we are supposed to. Yeah, give them flowers, but also give them the support and the representation they need. You could tell LL was a little tense in that clip, but he kept it classy and spoke facts. It was just an appropriate OG check that we all need sometimes when we trip him. Shout out to LL Cool J and Rock the Bells. I feel like it's like really cool that people still love your music and still love listening to it. And I also feel like there should be no age limits in hip hop. And yeah. because like classic music, it's timeless. No doubt. It's definitely timeless. There are no age limits. We love all generations. I just want to make sure that while we take care of the fruit, we also take care of the roots. You know what I mean, Jazzy? Yep. That was it. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe, comment, like, dislike. Let me know what's going on. I'm going to see you later, and I'm going to leave you on this. Don't even look at it. Go get the money. Oh, fuck. Don't even look at it. Get the money, dog. Go get the motherfucking money. Oh. Put the pressure's on. Oh. Motherfucking the money, man. Oh, uh, look at Triples. You can't aim for the triple. <laughs> fuck this shit. I need a fucking... <laughs>